Hi, today I'm going to talk about the movie recommender system. So, what is a recommender system? Briefly, a recommender system learns from previous ratings to predict the ratings user would give to an item and then produce recommendations to them. Recommendation system have made many improvements these years and become very common. It applies in many areas, such as movies, music, news, books, and research articles. Here are some websites using it. It is very important for these websites to have a good recommender system. Now, let's take a look at the dataset. The dataset contains 100,000 ratings from 943 users to 1,682 movies. The ratings are from 1 to 5. I separate the chain and validation set, which contain 90% and 10% of the total ratings. Now, the problem we have is that we want to get people's rating by learning from the training set. A possible solution would be using the relationship between users or movies. So, we may want to use the method of K nearest neighbor that predict the rating of one user based on other similar users. However, a big problem occurs here. Each user actually reads a very small subset of the whole movie set. Here's an example of the dataset. If we consider two users, the rating intersection can be very small, so it makes no sense to compute the similarity of them. Actually, we can see that the sparsity of the dataset is only 6.3%, that is really small. The solution for this problem is matrix factorization. As we see, the predict rating matrix here is represented by a product of two matrices, the parameter matrix and the feature matrix. Matrix theta, which is the parameter matrix, represents users' preference for different genres. The dimensionality of it is the number of users times the number of genres. Matrix X, which is the feature matrix, represents genres in the movies. The dimensionality of it is the number of genres times the number of movies. Here's the diagram this, of this process. Now let's look at the algorithms. The first algorithm is called content-based recommendation. It computes users' preference of features, which is the genres of the movies in our example. And then it minimizes the cost function to make prediction. Here are some notations. We have mentioned that content-based algorithms want to use users' preference for genres. So we should have a feature matrix for the movies to re represent the genres of them. Since we've already got some information about the genres in the dataset, we can just use them. For example, the feature vector of the first movie, Toy Story, is the list of numbers in the red circle. Since we use the information of those movies, we call this algorithm content-based algorithm. The cost function of it is pretty simple, which is the sum of the square of difference between the real ratings and the predict ratings. Another reason to call this algorithm content-based recommendation is that it does not use the relationship between the users. We will see it in the next step of this algorithm. The next step is to use gradient descent to update the parameter vector to get into the local minimum of the cost function. First, we initialize each parameter vector as zero, then we can apply gradient descent to it. Gradient descent works by making the cost function decrease in the fastest way. The picture is a two-dimensional example for it. From calculus, we know that the fastest way is to update the parameter vector by abstract the partial derivative from it. For notation, k in the formula represents the index of genres in the parameter and feature vector. So theta kj represents user j's preference for genre k. The formula should go for every element until the cost function reaches the local minimum. As we see, in content-based algorithm, we update every feature vector separately without using the relationship between them. Now, let's move on to the next algorithm, which is called the collaborative filtering recommendation. The cost function is the same, but at this time, we also change the feature matrix. Actually, in this way, the algorithm takes the relationship of users into, con into consideration. For this reason, collaborative filtering would get better results than content-based ones. These algorithms look good, but there are still some problems in them. 
The first one is called code start. The problem is that if there is a new user come in, since we do not have any information about him, we will predict his rating randomly, that is useless. So to solve this problem, we can do the mean normalization. We abstract the mean rating matrix from the original matrix in the algorithm. In the predict rating matrix, we add the mean rating matrix back. So now we can predict that the new user have the mean rating for all movies. The second problem is that we do not consider the difference between the users and the movies. For example, a canned user is tend to give higher ratings than a more strictly person. A rating of a good movie also be, would also be higher than the bad one. We solve this problem by adding a bias term to each parameter and feature vector. Then by the production of the parameter matrix and the feature matrix, the result would turn out to add a bias matrix to the predict rating matrix. The third problem is overfitting. The, alg the algorithm can turn out to fit the training set too much and happens to have low accuracy prediction. The solution for overfitting is either regularization term to the cost function. The term in the red circle is the changes we made. Here we take content-based recommendation as an example and collaborative filtering is very similar to it. Now we come to the result analysis part. The criteria is the root mean square error, a typical criteria for recommender system. Here, capital N represents the ratings in validation set. Xn is the predict rating we create, and x is the given rating. Here are some results I've got. The RMSE for only content-based recommendation without added bias and regularization term is about 1.5. After adding the bias term, the results have been improved a lot. And as we see, the collaborative filter algorithm overall works a lot better than the content-based one. The result after doing mean normalization is quite close to the result without doing so. After adding the bias term in collaborative filter algorithm, the result actually does not improve a lot, especially compared to the improvement we've got in content-based recommendation. The reason for this is that there are already 18 features that can change. The algorithm can automatically change them to represent the bias. Actually, adding bias term here is to adding another feature vector. It is good to have another one, but it does not work very well. Here is the diagram for regularization term. Lambda is the number that represents the weight of regularization term in cost function. So we can see when lambda is about 0.005 or 0.01, the algorithm gave the best results. In conclusion, we use gradient descent to learn the parameter matrix and the fixture matrix, and we use them to make prediction. In the future, I may try SVD, another matrix factorization method, and I may also apply my algorithm to larger data set. I can also try to solve the sparsity problem by matrix completion. So that's all for today. Thank you for your time.